Hey guys, another uh, good morning, another uh, or afternoon or whatever it is where you're at. Another little tech tip to go along with the last one. Got all my uh, got all my parts in for the uh, repairing the uh, silver mica disease on these little IF transformers. So let's get to it. All right, we got the first subject here. It's the first IF can. It's going to be T1. And I gotta find my glasses. Let's see. Let's get this done going here. First thing we gotta do. Is uh, very important to make note of your orientations of all this mess. I'm just gonna put a little mark right there, a little mark right there, so I'll know which can the uh, which which relationship the can is to the actual coil form. That way, when we put it together, all our markings will be the same, and there won't be none of this. Oh my gosh, what do we do? Because you can potentially, in this one here, get this backwards, and what that does is causes a phase or a phase error uh, between the two IF sections, and sometimes that'll cause big problems. Anyway, here comes the coil transform. Should I say? There it is. Adjust that where I can see it. I'm flipped. Anyway, there it is. Got to be super duper careful with this. Now, very carefully, let's see if I can see here. Zoom in a little bit. There's a rivet right here, a little brass rivet. Let me get you in there. That brass rivet goes through the coil or the transformer. Take my glasses off. And right here. What that does, if you can see it, right there, that has to be removed. You gotta remove that. And what that does is, there's a little piece of plastic right here that sandwiches all the mica. We've got to get rid of that. So what I got to do is set this up in my vise and get my Dremel, and I'm just going to Dremel out. Use my Dremel on the other side here and try to get rid of that rivet very carefully, not to hurt nothing on here. Once we do that, we can get to the mica inside here. Once we get all that mica out of there. Then we can determine the primary and secondary of this, put our coils, our capacitors in here, and uh, this one will be ready to roll. So let me uh, let me get set up for that next phase. All right, the first step that I've done is, and I did this a little bit different than I said I was going to do. There's a hundred ways to skin a cat, as the old saying goes. But do be careful with this. What I've done is, and I've done something you're not supposed to do, I use these Plato's right here, these really sharp uh, little diagonal cutters, model 170. These are made for component leads. This is not made for mechanical stuff. Anyway, I use these because they had a fine point on them and very flush, and I went into the rivet just like that, if you can see it, get in the frame, and cut that rivet out, as you can see right now. It's still flattened just a little bit. And here's the rivet right here at the top of it. So now I've got it to a point where I can take it out. So what I'm going to do now, lay it down on my table here so I don't poke a hole in my finger. And use a very, very fine tip pry device. I'm going to try to get underneath this right here. Very, very careful. There. I have a successfully remove the retainer clip. That can be discarded, I believe. Now, we can pull this out. At least I think we can. I can almost get to it. Just, got, just taking my time. Taking my time. I'm just taking my time and push that rivet out. Be very careful. I'm trying to pull that rivet out. There, I got the rivet out. 
Yeah, no Dremel required. Now that I've got that, make sure you guys are still in frame. Let me zoom you in a little bit there. There we go. That's a lot better. Now you see that piece is, just fell out. Now you can see the mica. There's your silver mica pieces right there. That's the bad guys. So there's a tab right here. And I'm going to lift it up. Lift it up. Turn it around to the other side. See if I can get you guys in really close. Here is the tabs right here. There's the top tab right there. And the mica is right underneath right here. I'm shaking. I'm sorry. I have that problem here lately. Don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, if you see, I can pull the mica sheet out. Look at that. You see all the little... Doesn't look too good, does it? What happens is, is the silver mica migration, or the migration of the metal, the metal is kind of like, if you've ever heard the uh, metallic whiskers, it's kind of like that. But it's just leaching of metallic, in, uh, the uh, metal or whatever that's inside the tabs is being basically absorbed into the mica. And when it does that, it creates little less short, little short bridges. It becomes conductive to a path, but it's a very, very, it's a very thin resistance, which means it's very, very, very like a microamp fuse. And what happens is what's causing the noise is that little bridge is being created and then being destroyed by the voltage potential that's across it. That's just what happened here. Those short potential has been created and then it immediately gets blown away and it's just doing that back and forth very fast very rapidly and that's what causes all the noise in the receiver so this is definitely not good so now that we got that out of the way now we're faced this was not really bad at all and what you can do is you take these little tabs Bend them up. Just try not to use too much pressure because this is very delicate. What I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to pry it like this. See how I move that one? Now I'm going to take my, do the same thing on the bottom one. The capacitor on these are two 100 picofarads, so not a really a problem. And I'm going to take this one, bend it, yeah, like that. Can you see it? That gives me something to attach my capacitor to. Oop, I can't see very good. I'm shaking like a leaf. Now, I've trimmed them, so what I'm going to do now, let me make these the same. You can't see me, can you? I'm trying to do too much here at once. It's been a heck of a morning this morning. Alright, I already know that these are 100 picofarads. The first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to open up the package. Two 100 picofarads. Now I got 300 volt capacitors, okay? My viewfinder's upside down because of stupid cameras. Anyway, there's my finger. There's the capacitor. That's a 300 volt, 100 picofarad capacitor. Mica, silver mica, should I say. How ironic is that? Just gonna trim the leads. Oh man, I dropped it. I felt it hit my hip. That was it. That's the way it goes. I'll be right back. I'm just shaky. I don't know why. I guess it's caffeine, caffeine or something. 
So we got to figure out how to put these back in there and we remember we have that can that we got to contend with. So we got a uh, alignment tool that's got to go in through there too. So I'm just kind of playing with it right now just trying to figure out the best way to do it. I think what I want to do I'm just going to cut these tabs off. Now, now the tabs are cut off. I can't even see you guys. There you are. Cut those tabs off and I'm going to solder and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. You got to keep your lead links short, okay? Because that does affect things. The lead links will affect how this thing works. It will add capacitance and it will change things. So you're trying to keep your lead links as short as possible. So, alright, let me turn my soldering iron on. Basically, I formed the leads of the replacement capacitor. Boy, this viewfinder is just awful on this camera, and it's upside down when I flip it. I've cut the lead links as short as possible and I'll show you. I'm just going to I'm going to tack them on right here to each one of those tabs. It's going to be hard to put you guys in the shot. But I'm going to tin the leads first on those. Remember, too much heat's your enemy. I'm shaking so bad. All right, got that one tinned. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Ooh, timber! God, I just—I think most of this is caffeine. There we go. Now that I got that, I'm going to have to turn you a little bit, okay? I'm sorry. I've got to have both hands and i got to have my full attention here. Let that cool. Before I tack the other one in, I want to show you. God, I can't want to see. You see how I done that? I bent the leads here. I tacked the tacked the end right here. Boom. I'm not doing no J hooks or nothing like that. I'm just doing what I can to get that in there without breaking the capacitor. And I'm shaking so bad this morning. And now I'm just going to tack this other one down and do the other side. And this capacitor should be good to go. We'll test it. I got to have both hands for this. I apologize. The only thing about mounting these light capacitors like this, you can't get these leads too hot because you could possibly unsolder it there. Now what we do is we just take the capacitor very carefully. Very carefully because this thing about as delicate as a rice rice patty remember this has got to adjust up and down so try 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 without breaking it move it outward now yeah, that should give us enough clearance for that coil form to go up and down now I'll just do the same thing for this side and this should be good to go. I'll own this thing out to make sure it's still good. Didn't damage it. In fact, 
I think I'm going to do this one a little different. Get that other capacitor. I'm going to bend the leads. And matter of fact, I put the other one in. I put the last one in backwards. It doesn't really matter the polarity on these things because there's no insider. There's no full. Have to worry about. But I ain't going to turn this one around where the it will favor the outside. So let me tin them. And it looks like I'm running out of memory card. Alright, showing I got four minutes left on my memory card. Here, yeah, there you go. It's in there. I'm going to ohm this out to make sure it's good. Uh, determine the primary versus the secondary to make sure I get this back in right. Put it back together, test it again, and then I'll do the other one and uh, put another memory card in and all, all right. that. Alright, we have the uh, transformer put back together, or I do. I guess we have, it's a joint venture, I reckon. And the same test setup, we're going to use the signal uh, chaser, noise function. I've got one clip lead on the primary side, one clip lead on the secondary side. We're going to go up here, uh, put this on trace. Turn the gain up. Let it warm up a minute. Oil function. We know it's warmed up. Noise function. La voila. No noise. Voila. And there's the bad mica. Could repair these if you wanted to, but really ain't no point in it. So that one is repaired. Successful repair, and that's kind of how you do it. 